and welcome to another teaching by 119 Ministries. Our ministry teaches that the whole Bible is true and applicable for our lives today. If you would like to know more about what we believe and teach, please visit us at testeverything.net. We hope that you enjoy studying and testing the following teaching. In 2 Kings chapter 5, we read a very interesting story. There are some obvious messages related to our faith in this particular story. However, in this teaching, we are going to focus on what is more hidden. To properly reveal this, some of our other teachings are highly recommended as a primer. The teachings, the fourth and seventh day, and Hebrews 4, in his rest now or later, reveal the timeline of our Creator as it relates to our Messiah, Yeshua. We see that there is a 7,000-year plan. We see that our Messiah will come and restore us on the seventh day. If that concept is completely foreign to you, then we highly recommend reviewing those teachings. It would look something like this. Day 1, 0 to 1,000 years. Day 2, 1,000 to 2,000 years. Day 3, 2,000 to 3,000 years. Day 4, 3,000 to 4,000 years. Day 5, 4,000 to 5,000 years. Day 6, 5,000 to 6,000 years. And finally, day 7, 6,000 to 7,000 years. So the seventh day starts at year 6,000. Two other teachings we would recommend would be the lost sheep and what is the gospel. In those teachings, we show how does Yah's plan to restore all of Israel. What we mean by that is that the house of Israel as the ten tribes of the northern kingdom, and the house of Judah, Jews, as the two tribes of the southern kingdom, will eventually be restored back together as one according to the prophets. This will occur at our Messiah's return on the seventh day accompanied by a resurrection. If any of that is also foreign to you, we recommend either one or both of those teachings as well in order to fully appreciate what is hidden in 2 Kings chapter 5. While we recommend those teachings for the full context and detail necessary to fully appreciate the hidden understanding found in 2 Kings 5, we realize that showing you some scripture is beneficial. If nothing else, for the purpose of this teaching, please know this. The house of Israel consists of ten tribes. They were divorced by Yah and considered unclean. The house of Judah exists as two tribes. They were not divorced by Yah, but did not return with her whole heart. In Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 8, we find that the house of Israel left and did not return. They were consequently divorced by Yahweh. Judah stayed, but not with her whole heart. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 8 and verse 10. She saw for all the adulteries of that faithless one, Israel, I have sent her away with a decree of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister Judah did not fear, but she too went and played the whore. Yet for all this, her treacherous sister Judah did not return to me with her whole heart, but in pretense, declares Yahweh. So the house of Israel, or ten tribes, were divorced. Judah stayed, but she was treacherous, or deceitful. For the remainder of this teaching, remember that Judah was associated with treachery and deceit, staying with Yahweh in pretense. That will be important later. The ten tribes of the house of Israel are viewed by Yah as being unclean. Ezekiel 36, 17. Son of man, when the house of Israel lived in their own land, they defiled it by their ways and their deeds. Their ways before me were like the uncleanness of a woman in her menstrual impurity. In the same chapter, we learn that the ten tribes of the house of Israel will once again be made clean. Ezekiel 36. Therefore say to the house of Israel, the ten tribes, the northern kingdom, Thus says Yahweh God, It is not for your sake, O house of Israel, that I am about to act, 
but for the sake of my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations to which you came. And I will vindicate the holiness of my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, and which you have profaned among them. And the nations will know that I am Yahweh, declares Yahweh God, when through you I will vindicate my holiness before their eyes. I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean from all of your uncleanliness, and from all your idols I will cleanse you. And I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful to obey my rules. You shall dwell in the land I gave to your fathers, and you shall be my people, and I will be your God. And I will deliver you from all your uncleanliness. And I will summon the grain and make it abundant and lay no famine upon you. And I will make the fruit of the tree and the increase of the field abundant, that you may never again suffer the disgrace of famine among the nations. Then you will remember your evil ways and your deeds that were not good, and you will loathe yourself for your iniquities and your abominations. It is not for your sake I will act, declares Yahweh God. Let that be known to you. Be ashamed and confounded for your ways, O house of Israel. The next chapter goes from the house of Israel being made clean to the restoration of the house of Judah, the two tribes of the southern kingdom, and the house of Israel, the ten tribes of the northern kingdom. Here, the two divided nations become one. Ezekiel 37. The hand of Yahweh was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of Yahweh and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. And he led me around among them, and behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley, and behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Yahweh God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of Yahweh. Thus says Yahweh God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live. And you shall know that I am Yahweh. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and I prophesied. There was a sound, and behold, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. And I looked, and behold, there were sinews upon them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says Yahweh God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are indeed cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says Yahweh God, Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will bring you into the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am Yahweh, when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I am Yahweh, I have spoken. I will do it, declares Yahweh. The word of Yahweh came to me, Son of man, take a stick, or a tree, and ride on it, for Judah and the people of Israel associated with him. Then take another stick, or a tree, and ride on it, for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and all the house of Israel associated with him. And join them one to another into one stick, that they may become one in your hand. And when your people say to you, Will you not tell us what you mean by these? Say to them, Thus says Yahweh God, Behold, I am about to take the stick of Joseph, that is, in the hand of Ephraim, 
and the tribes of Israel associated with him. And I will join with it the stick of Judah and make them one stick, that they may be one in my hand. When the sticks on which you write are in your hand before their eyes, then say to them, Thus says Yahweh God, Behold, I will take the people of Israel from the nations among which they have gone, and I will gather them from all around and bring them into their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land, on the mountains of Israel. And one king shall be king over all of them. And they shall be no longer two nations, and no longer divided into two kingdoms. They shall not defile themselves any more with their idols and their detestable things, or with any of their transgressions. But I will save them from all the backslidings in which they have sinned, and will cleanse them, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God. My servant David shall be king over them, and they shall all have one shepherd. They shall walk in my rules and be careful to obey my statutes. They shall dwell in the land that I gave to my servant Jacob, where your fathers lived. They and their children and their children's children shall dwell there forever, and David my servant shall be their prince forever. I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them, and I will set them in their land and multiply them, and will set my sanctuary in their midst forevermore. My dwelling place shall be with them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Then the nations will know that I am Yahweh, who sanctifies Israel, when my sanctuary is in their midst forevermore. As you have now read, it is Yahweh's plan to restore all of Israel. What we mean by that is that the house of Israel as the ten tribes of the northern kingdom, and the house of Judah, Jews, as the two tribes of the southern kingdom, will eventually be restored back together as one, according to the prophets. This will occur at our Messiah's return on the seventh day restoration, accompanied by a resurrection, and the prophetic picture of resting on the seventh day will be complete, as we rest with him on the day of the Lord. What we are about to show you in 2 Kings chapter 5 is not unique here. There are countless examples that can be offered that show in the hidden form the prophecy of the two houses being restored back together as one. This is simply one of those places. So let's begin. Naaman was commander of Syria's army and well respected, but he had leprosy. His servant, a girl from Israel, suggested that he visit Elisha to be healed of his leprosy. As we continue, please remember, when you have leprosy, you are unclean. Also recall what we read in the prophets about the ten tribes of the house of Israel being unclean, and then being made clean. Naaman left for Israel, taking a large gift with him, and a letter from Ben-Hadad, the king of Syria, asking for the king of Israel to heal Naaman. Please note what we have highlighted as it is referenced later in the teaching. 2 Kings chapter 5, verses 5-6 through 6. So he went, taking with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten changes of clothing. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel, which read, When this letter reaches you, know that I have sent to you Naaman, my servant, that you may cure him of his leprosy. Notice the ten talents, the mention of six thousand, and the ten changes of clothing that we highlighted. Those are important key words. The king of Israel's reaction was outright panic, wondering, how could anyone heal leprosy? The king of Israel assumed Ben-Hadad was trying to pick a fight. When the prophet Elisha learned of the king's frustration with the situation, he inquired of the king, saying, Why have you torn your clothes? Let him come now to me, that he may know that there is a prophet in Israel. Naaman then came to Elisha's house with his chariots, gifts, and servants. Elisha did not even come out to greet Naaman. Instead, he sent a message to wash in the Jordan River seven times. In this way, Elisha demonstrated his message to Naaman that salvation and restoration cannot be purchased. It is by grace alone. 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 10. And Elisha sent a messenger to him, saying, Go and wash in the Jordan 
seven times, and your flesh shall be restored, and you shall be clean. Notice the mention of being restored and being made clean. Also note the mention of a seven. More on all of that in a moment. Naaman, however, was apparently angry that his request was not seemingly being taken seriously. 2 Kings chapter 5, verses 11 and 12. But Naaman was angry and went away, saying, Behold, I thought that he would surely come out to me and stand and call upon the name of Yahweh his God and wave his hand over the place and cure the leper. Are not Abana and Farper, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. Naaman's servants urged him to reconsider, and Naaman wisely did. Notice how at this point Naaman left and returned, just like the ten tribes of the house of Israel. More on that in a moment. After dipping himself in the Jordan River seven times, he was completely healed, as Elisha had said. In fact, his flesh was restored and became clean like that of a young boy. Note again, this restoration and being made clean occurred on a seven. Naaman returned to Elisha and said, Behold, I know that there is no God in all the earth but in Israel, so accept now a present from your servant. Elisha refused the gift and sent the Syrian commander away in peace. However, Elisha's servant, Gehazi, followed Naaman and deceitfully asked for a gift in Elisha's name. Naaman gave him two talents of silver in two bags with two changes of clothing. In Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 8, we notice that the house of Israel, the ten tribes, were divorced from Yahweh, but Judah, the two tribes, remained, but not with her whole heart. More on the connections to the two houses of Israel in a moment. Gehazi hid the loot and returned home, where Elisha confronted him. Gehazi lied to cover up the matter. Yahweh had given Elisha insight, and the prophet told Gehazi, Therefore the leprosy of Naaman shall cling to you and your descendants forever. Gehazi immediately contracted leprosy. So to understand this, to start, we need to examine some of the numbers presented to us in the chapter. Ten talents of silver in verse 5, the two talents of silver, the two bags, in verse 23, the ten changes of clothing, in verse 5, the two changes of clothes, in verse 23, two young men, verse 22, the six thousand of gold, in verse 5, and the seven times of dipping the mikvah, or baptism, in the river, verse 10. As you look at this list on the screen, some of you watching this teaching already see the connection just by seeing the numbers. Let's review the numbers, what they metaphorically mean. The ten talents of silver is a reference to the ten tribes of the house of Israel, the northern kingdom. The two talents of silver is a reference to the two tribes of the house of Judah, Jews, the southern kingdom. The ten and two changes of clothes represents the resurrection, being permanently changed in clean clothes, the word of God. Revelation 22.14 Blessed are those who wash their robes, that they may have a right to the tree of life. Revelation 3.18 And white garments, that you may clothe yourself, and that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed. Revelation 3.5 he who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments. The two young men refer to the two sticks of the house of Judah and the house of Israel being brought back together. The 6,000 gold stands for the timing of the year, 6,000, which is the seventh day. Being dipped in the river seven times metaphorically represents when we will be made clean on this seventh day, through the resurrection. Despite leaving and returning, Naaman was still made clean. This is just as the ten tribes of Israel who left and will return, being made clean. The two talents of silver and two changes of clothing, representing the house of Judah and the resurrection of Judah, was not without deceit and uncleanliness. This is just as Jeremiah 3.8 stated about the house of Judah. 
Jeremiah 3, eight. She saw that for all the adulteries of that faithless one Israel, I had sent her away with a decree of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister Judah did not fear. But she too went and played the whore. Fortunately, Elisha saw it. The two changes of clothing and the two talents of silver staying with Elisha and the uncleanliness of Naaman leaving just as the uncleanliness will leave from the house of Judah. By the way, in all of this, in Hebrew, Elisha means God, El, is my salvation. How appropriate is that? If you are already familiar with the biblical restoration of Israel and the prophetic timing, then this little insight was likely quite interesting to you. In this way, all of Israel will be saved. If you are not already familiar with these concepts, then you are missing out on about two-thirds of the Bible, and we encourage you to research it, starting with the teachings we recommended already. We hope that this teaching has blessed you, and remember, continue to test everything. Shalom. It is because of you, our generous supporters, who make it possible to offer these high-quality teachings completely free of charge. If you feel led to support 119 Ministries so that we can continue this effort, please visit testeverything.net and click on the Support 119 tab. Learn how you can partner with us to take the whole Word of God to the nations.